everyone, it's Tori, and in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at how to read a clothing pattern. So exciting. Uh, the reason this video came about is I am actually making a dress for a cocktail party for my birthday coming up here very quickly. Um, uh, the uh, event, it's a kind of charity event, is going to be here in probably eight days. And so, uh, I mean, that's pretty quick <laughs> to turn around a dress. And my last couple of projects that I've done, I've actually created them from scratch. Uh, you know, I made my own pattern pieces, I fit them, and it took a little bit of time uh, to make sure everything fit together exactly the way I wanted it to. So because I'm on a time crunch, I wanted to find a pattern uh, that was exactly what I was looking for. Now, if you have ever bought a pattern or if you thought about buying a pattern, the first thing is finding like I mentioned, exactly what you want. I was looking for like a 60s mod dress. In fact, I sketched it out. A 60s mod mini dress, A-line with puff sleeves and maybe a mock neck, maybe not. And in fact, I have something uh, right here. This is actually a vintage 1960s, exactly what I wanted, um, but it had a zipper in the back. And I really didn't want a zipper. Um, I wanted, especially with this kind of style, if I can get kind of a looser style, I could do a bow or something in the back. I love bows. I add bows to like almost all of my garments. So that's what I was thinking. So I thought, oh, this will be simple. I could totally, totally find a pattern um, that I could use. Uh, I was wrong, <laughs> totally wrong. Uh, a lot of things had been modernized and they I found some that were pretty close and I'll kind of show you what that looked like. So um, this is the inspiration that I actually found that I was like, okay, I need to recreate this without a zipper. And uh, so my journey, <laughs> my journey began on the interwebs. And uh, what I'm gonna show you here in a moment, I'll actually show you what the journey looked like, how I found the pattern that I'm using, where I went to get the pattern and uh, the great news is I did find one. I haven't started anything yet. The only thing I did was I purchased a digital pattern. Yes, we'll talk about that. And I'm gonna walk you through the booklet directions, all of those things that you need to look at before you even start the project. So if that sounds interesting to you, stick around. Um, hopefully you like this video and subscribe for more Crafty Girl content coming your way down the road. Okay, let's dive in. This is how I found the pattern that I really, really wanted. Um, so I did a search, just a Google search. I spent a lot of time on Google, scrolling through, looking at all these images. I searched for pattern, I searched for digital pattern, I searched DIY, all these things. Um, and this is where I found that dress. And I followed the link to the dress. It was a Pinterest and it was um, an old listing here, but I wanted to point out ultraviolet vintage. Um, I'm not affiliated with this Etsy store, but this dress was gorgeous and I want to make sure to give them credit uh, because I mean look at that oh it's so beautiful so then what I did is in my search for a pattern um, this was the closest that I could find uh, like I mentioned they modernized this style I just wanted the a-line I just wanted a straight a-line that is it um, without this little connection here in the center and then it also had a zipper so in my mind um, this was a digital pattern and I found this actually by going to a website called somethingdelightful.com I'll show you that here in a second uh, it's where you can search for different uh, patterns that are already made I I first of all I searched Etsy high and low if I could have found this pattern on Etsy and supported a smaller uh, maker pattern maker I would have done it but I could not find it and again I spent hours this was not a I did not buy this pattern lightly um, and I didn't actually buy this pattern at all so I, I was like, oh, I could hack it. I could make it work. But remember, I want a time crunch. I don't have time to hack a pattern. I just need something that is going to work. So then as I started um, doing a little more research, I came across this little blog right here. So Reagan, isn't she stinking adorable? Um, so Reagan had this blog because I wanted to see if someone had made that pattern and I searched for that pattern number review. To see, and if you're ever wondering how a pattern is going to fit or if people have hacked it or that kind of thing, you can actually search for the pattern number on Google and, search, and with the word like review and then people will make the patterns and they'll give you like their images of what they did and, and a lot of advice as well. So that's a little tip for 
for you. And that's how I found Reagan here at Kama Sotra. Uh, oh my God, and this is so adorable. So when I saw this, I saw that um, it was for patterns 7800 and 7832. The one I had looked at was 7832. When I was reading through this pattern design and what she had posted here in her blog, this one had exactly what I wanted. It had the keyhole back, it did not have a zipper, it did not have that break here in the um, midsection. So this is what I wanted and it was actually a pattern that was no longer in print. Okay. That's the other thing, because of digital patterns these days, you can actually still find them. So I went to somethingdelightful.com, make sure I don't have any sensitive information here, but I went to somethingdelightful.com and I did a search for that pattern and I found it. Um, it was expensive. You can see I spent $21.75 on this pattern, but it was exactly what I wanted. Uh, it's an easy pattern and I'll talk about that in a moment. And that's how we got to the point where we are today. So this is a lot of build up so that we can walk through what this pattern means, but it's a digital pattern so I can show you what it is. So this is what we're going to be looking at the McCall's 7800 out of print. Um, but digital download, super exciting. All right, so here it is. I, I downloaded it. This is the instruction. So when you do a digital pattern, there's usually going to be two different files, maybe more than two files. This file is the instructions file, and then uh, you'll have another file, which is the pattern pieces that you'll need to print and put together. So this is what I wanted to focus on in this video because whether you're doing it digitally or you're at the store with an actual package in your hand, uh, a lot of this information is going to be exactly the same. So first things first, you'll see that as you go through the booklet, um, this one actually says skill level easy, love an easy pattern. I love an easy pattern because then I get the sense of accomplishment. I can do it really quickly. And because my brain is constantly trying to go to new projects, I can, you know, actually have a check mark. And remember, I need to get this one done soon, <laughs> soon. Um, because yeah, I still haven't quite picked out the fabric yet, but that's another story. Then what you're going to find is it talks to you about the different uh, styles or the different um, versions of the actual pattern. So you'll find that this one, okay, and I'll go back here and show you, I don't like this. This image that they're showing, if this is the image I had to go by, I would not have even looked at this pattern. I don't like a v-neck at all. Velvet is not my thing. It just this didn't do it. However, on the package itself, you'll see that there are these styles here. So you'll find that the A is going to be more of the short sleeve with the, um, the small neckline here. The C is going to have a uh, bow at the top. B is going to have the long sleeves. And then D is going to have a little ruffle long sleeve. And then it'll show you the back of the items as well. So each of these, so A, B, um, A and B are going to have the keyhole. And then C isn't going to have a keyhole, neither is D. And that's because D has the V-neck and um, C has the bow on the top. So before you do anything else, you need to decide which of these uh, you would like to make. You'll also find notions. So when you, if you're at a fabric store or you're shopping online, you need to buy the notions and those are essentially the tools that you're going to need to make your item. Especially with easy patterns, it's so awesome. This one, all you need is a hook and an eye. Um, I'm actually not going to use a hook and eye. I'm going to uh, use bias tape and a button, and I'm going to make a buttonhole or I'll make a bow. I haven't decided yet. That's like that's the finishes. I'm gonna I'll deal with that last. It also wants oh, and that's for version A and B. And remember, you need to look at your version because some versions need other uh, requirements than others. So A and D needs a package of single fold bias tape, or you can just make your own bias tape. I mean, honestly, but if you want to buy bias tape, you can. I have a bunch of it I found at the thrift store, um, but I like to make my own bias tape. And then if you're doing version C, you're going to need a quarter yard of French trim. Now, the version that I want to make is going to be B. You'll see that the sleeve is a little different than what I actually wanted. So this is, is almost a bishop sleeve with the little, uh, what do you call that? The seam in the middle. I probably could hack this and make this a full puff sleeve, but what I do like about it is because we're in winter, I have to wear a jacket over this, and if I have the big old puff sleeve that I wanted, it's gonna get flattened by a jacket anyway. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with this sleeve right here. Again, it's already made for me, and um, sorry, I'm just looking for a tissue. Here we go. Okay, put it 
perfect. Um, so I think I'm gonna go with B right here, and uh, so that means that I'm just gonna need one hook and eye, and, and that's it, I won't need any of these other. Also your fabrics, fabrics are important. Uh, it, 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 when it says a suggested fabric, you probably wanna go by that, unless you're very comfortable um, taking a risk because they have been created specifically for the shape. For example, if let's say you wanted to do the, you know, A or B, we wanna do that, and you get a fabric that doesn't have a lot of give to it, or it doesn't have a lot of movement, it's probably not going to, like denim. The, I, I can't see this would be a really good pattern for denim, um, although maybe, <laughs> I guess, depending on if it's a lighter denim. So always go by what this is. I'm probably gonna be using cotton blends because I like the way that they move, and, um, and I already have a couple of piece, uh, fabric here already. Okay, next thing, now that you know what you're going to need, so you can say, yep, I have, I have, I have um, the notions or I can pick out the notions for that. The next is to identify your size. And the reason that's important is because you need to pick out your fabric and you need to ensure you have enough fabric. Don't go by these sizes. Do not look at these sizes and say, oh, my size isn't on here. So I typically wear a women's US size two. That is the, the size I wear. When you are buying patterns, when you are making clothing from patterns, do not go buy these sizes on here because they are not what, um, they're not equivalent to like a US size. So we're gonna come back to this because we're gonna scroll down and you're gonna find finished garment measurements. You'll scroll down more and on this one there's body measurements. Now, I am gonna go by the finished garment measurements instead of the body measurements, and let's talk about why. So you can see here. So in this case, the body measurements for a size six is 30 and a half inches for the bust. The waist is 23 inches and the hip is 32 and a half. Okay, let's talk about that. Those, my measurements, if I were to go by my measurements, right? If I were to look at, I'm about a 34, right, 34 inch, 34 B, I would have to come all the way down here. And then my waist, I think is a 27 these days. So then I'm like in between, and then my hip is gonna be in between here. So I would wanna make a, between a 12 and a 14, right? So if I was just going by body measurements. But if I scroll up here and I look at the finished garment measurements, I'm gonna see, well, if I did that, I'm gonna have close to like a 40 inch bust up here, and that's gonna give me a lot of room. Depending on what the style is, that might be what you want. And remember, this dress does not have a zipper, so you have to think about that as well. So there's a lot that goes into like your fit. It's always better go up a size, and then you can tailor it down, but if you make it too small, you can't make it fit. So definitely, um, and there is seam allowance, and if you're not sure what seam allowance is, seam allowance is, and it should tell you in the package, I haven't seen it yet, um, but that's how much kind of wiggle room you have in your pattern so that you can take it out a little or uh, you know tailor it in a little bit. So there is usually that taken into account with the pattern pieces. So in this case, when I look at this, I mean, I know that I want this to be a little bit looser. I'm, I'm probably going to go with an eight or a 10 um, because again, with this, it's an A-line and I want it to be a little bit loose and then I can tailor it in. So that's where I'm thinking. I'm thinking 10 is like right in between, but I still think that's going to be giant. I still think that, that for my body, that is going to be too big, um, but at least I know how to edit. Also, I wanna point out over here on the left, the view. This again is going to be imperative because which view did I say we're doing? C, I think we're doing B, C? No, we're doing B, so B is in Bill. Okay, the hubs. So we're doing view B, um, back down here, and then that's where all of these are gonna be the same. So the same measurements for A, B, C, and D, but always think about that. Okay, now we've looked at that. We looked at our notions, we looked at the measurements, figured out which of the um, sizes we're going to make, the views we're going to make, and now we need to look at yardage charts. And yardage charts, this is how much fabric do you need? Do you have enough fabric? If you're using something from home, um, or do you have to purchase fabric? But in this case, you're gonna see for each of the views, and it also has fusible interfacing, and we'll talk about that in a second. So I'm doing B, 
and then here are the measurements. So um, you'll see that if I was doing a six or eight, I just need two and three quarters. If I get up to a 10, I need two and seven, eight. And then again, it goes up. So this is why you need to make sure you pick out your view and your sizing before you get your fabric. This over here, the 45 inch and the 60 inch, that has to do with the width of the fabric. Um, so depending on if you get fashion fabric, fashion fabric um, or apparel fabric, I don't know what, I think um, Joann's calls it apparel fabric. It usually comes in a wider bolt. Uh, so then that way if there's a pattern or something, you can get more of that. So that might be a 60 inch. So that's always something to consider. I think most if you're doing like a, I use a lot of quilting cotton because I love the prints and I love that, um, I love. I just love a cotton dress. Um, mine are usually 45 inches. So I kind of just go with that. I think all, well, I bought a sheet, by the way. I bought a red sheet set from Amazon um, because I wanted to wear a red dress to this cocktail party. So in this case, I could just go with 60 inches. It doesn't really matter um, because we're going to look at the layout here in a moment. These booklets have everything you need, I promise. Okay, so we're going with view B. I know I have enough fabric to make this. Excellent. Let's go down to the next section. Cutting layouts. So these are here to help you maximize the amount of space that you have. Um, and I just realized I keep looking at the microphone. I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. Sorry, if that's distracting you, I'm going to try to stop that now. Um, what was I saying? Oh, the layouts. So the layouts are to help you maximize your fabric. As sewists, we make a lot of waste. We have a ton of waste. All you know, every time we cut a pattern piece, you're going to have leftover fabric that's awkward and wonky. Um, I will say this, and I will say this every single time I show a video about sewing: save your fabric scraps. There are so many things you can do with fabric scraps that I, there's so many projects. In fact, little plug right here: uh, coming up this Saturday, we're doing our first episode of the Scrappy Hour, where we're going to be doing fabric scrap crafts, and this is going to be a recurring uh, little little series that we're going to do on this channel. So if you are a maker and you use fabric scraps, email me, let me know uh, if you want to be on the, if you want to be on the series, cause I would love to have you and uh, I would love to try some new projects. Okay. With that said, this is going to show you, uh, in this case, it says your printed tile pieces, and that's because this is a digital pattern. Uh, with digital pattern pieces, you have to print each of them, and then you have to cut them out. You have to tape them and align them. If you are getting a pattern piece um, that's already in a package, all you have to do is open it up and cut out the tissue paper um, or the tissue pieces. Also, uh, pro tip, pro tip. When you get a pattern, you actually should transfer that pattern onto additional paper, like a pattern paper, before you cut it out. That way you can preserve the additional sizing. And that's, if you go up a size or down a size, um, you spent the money on the pattern, you, you know, you wanna make sure that you can use it over and over again, uh, especially if there's, um, a change in sizing. Since I'm doing a digital pattern, I'm just gonna cut it out at the size I want because I can just print it again. So there are 13 total pieces for this dress. Now you don't need all 13 pieces unless, unless it says you do, but for A, B, C, and D, well, <laughs> okay, let's go through and see. Um, for dress A, B, C, and D, we need number one, two, three, four, five. Uh, okay, this is where it starts changing. So for number three, this is the front neck facing for A and B. We will not need piece number three. Uh, number four, back neck facing A. Oh no, actually we will because we're doing B. That's right. So we'll need number three, we'll need number four. We will not need number five. This is for pieces C and D. We don't need number six, don't need number seven, eight. We need number nine, don't need 10, need 11, etc. cetera. Um, so you'll see that you only will need, uh, you know, not all of those pieces unless it says you do need all those pieces. And this is just an image of what they look like. Also, it's gonna give you some tips. So if you're brand new to uh, uh, using patterns, first thing, and you should be doing this anyway, you should always wash your fabric and press, and I looked at this again, you should always wash your fabric and press it before you use it because um, it could shrink, it could shift. If you have a pattern, it could you know change. So just always make sure that you wash, um, unless you plan on just steaming or dry cleaning your items, you should always wash and press. 
Uh, and then it's gonna talk to you about with fold, without fold, single thickness, the pattern key, this is really important, uh, right side of pattern, because sometimes when you're laying out a pattern to maximize your fabric, they might have you turn things to the wrong side or the right side of fabric. Um, just this is the pattern key, and each pattern will be a little different. Before you ever cut, it also says lay them out on your fabric, and then it says to pin. Um, pin if you want to pin you can pin I actually use fabric weight so that I don't damage the fabric a lot of fabric has a lot um, that I use as cotton and it has resiliency so it will not show those pin marks but it's in it's time consuming to pin so I like to use just the uh, just the fabric weights at uh, throughout the item and then cut it out that way You'll see, cut accurately, it says to cut notches outward. This is funny because I have never cut notches outward. And if you're wondering what cut notches even mean, with your pattern pieces, and see if it's gonna show it on here. Um, well, with the pattern pieces, what they're talking about is to make sure things align. Each of the pieces might have uh, the notches so that you can align like the sleeve side or um, the waistband or whatever it is. So then that way they, you know, you can make sure that they align or line up. Uh, I always cut in with my notches because if they give me a five eighths of an inch seam allowance, I can cut in like a quarter of an inch and it won't have an impact on the garment. So I cut in, this says to cut out whatever you wanna do, you just wanna mark those notches. Um, folding fabric with right sides together uh, and then pinning, then it's blah, 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 okay. Here are your cutting layouts. Again, first thing you need to look at is which view you have. I don't have dress A, so I'm gonna hit, oh, and I didn't even talk about the fusible interfacing. I realized that, hold on. Let's go back up here. Um, you're probably like, wait, why'd you skip that? Fusible interfacing, a lot of times when you are sewing, especially um, in this type of pattern, it's going to have you want to put some interfacing in a garment to give it a little bit of stiffness at pieces. Uh, so that's what that is. And usually it's only a little bit. So in my case, I would need, what was it? Like one and seven eighths. Okay, with that said, now we're gonna look at the layout. Fusible interfacing for B, where is view B? Dress A. So here's your fusible interface for B. Uh, you're gonna lay it on the fusible interfacing and you're gonna do this. Uh, where is dress B? Okay, dress B. So it's gonna tell you exactly what pieces you need. They're all going to be numbered. It's gonna be super simple. You're gonna say if this is the layout, if you're using a 45 inch uh, bolt of fabric. In this case, you'll see it also says some of them need to be uh, wrong sides together, some needs to be right sides together, and that is very important because that will impact how the pattern actually, or the fabric fits together, the pattern pieces fit together. So in this case, again, go back to your, if you're not sure, you can come up here. This shows wrong side of pattern. So instead of wrong side of fabric, this is saying wrong side of pattern. And you know, it may seem confusing, but always just double check. Just take your time. Um, you know, what is it, measure twice and cut once? Yeah, I would measure like five times because I don't want to mess anything up, especially if you have really good fabric. Oh, another key, another key tip for you. Um, use a twall, uh, if you don't know what twall means, uh, a twall or do a test. I essentially, in modern terminology, I would say just use a test fabric uh, if it's the first time you're making it. Some people use muslin. I actually use sheets that I get at the thrift store. In fact, this is the sheet that I'm going to be using. Um, hopefully the video is going to be showing this right now. If not, I'll pop up a picture, but it is this uh, just little hearts. I'm gonna use this. It's actually a duvet cover and I'm gonna cut it up and use that um, as my tester just to make sure that everything works out the way I want it to. So that's a big recommendation. Uh, then it also tells you how to lay it out if you have uh, 60 inch. And then the with or without nap, um, I, I honestly, I'm gonna tell you, I don't know what nap means, but in my mind, what I always associate that with is if there's a pattern, um, because you definitely need to make sure that all of, like if you have, well stripes aren't, well no stripes are a great example if you want those stripes to align. So there's a lot of steps involved in the booklet and then a lot of times they're going to go through and show you what the symbols mean. They're gonna give you some definitions, which is really great. I do love that this is, is sharing that with us. Here's again the notches. 
So see, it said to cut the notches out. I mean, I outward, I cut them inward because they're shaped inward. So that's how I've always done it and I've never had a problem. But again, trust your, <laughs> trust your patterns um, because they may have a reason for doing that unless you've been doing it a long time. They'll also give you some tips to lengthen and shorten to make some basic alterations on the items, which is really great news, especially if you have, you know, a longer torso, shorter torso, or maybe I'm 5'4", so I want this dress to be mini, so I'm probably going to have to shorten it a little bit, um, but this just gives you a lot of information here to do that. Also, as I mentioned, seam allowance. This is the measurement that is used to turn up your hem is what it's saying. Uh, and I can tell you with this one, I'm going to be making some hacks on it. Uh, I want my I want my bottom hem to actually have like a four inch hem. Uh, and I might put horsehair in it depending if I want it to stick out or not. And horsehair is just like a stiff fabric. It sounds really weird, horsehair. Um, but it's a stiff fabric and it depends on how I want this to fit. And then you should have a glossary. So you should go through, read through these. If you're brand new, these can be very, very helpful, especially as you're reading through the instructions. Again, more fabric instructions. Um, and then this is where you get into the actual instructions for the garment construction. So all of the things that we've talked about so far, that was just the prep stage. When it comes to sewing, one of the most time consuming things you will do is you will prep to sew. The sewing part is like, you know, a small portion of it, it's the prepping. So then it'll tell you what you need to do for the interfacing, and then it goes into your instructions. And what I love about this pattern is that it is going to give you images, and it's going to tell you what each step should look like. This is great, and especially it tells you which views it goes to, so you can kind of use this as a checklist. Uh, and this is always super helpful. So lots of different steps here. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna print this out. You can print it out to have it, um, or if you have it, it should be part of your actual pattern if you have the physical pattern. All right, well, hopefully you found this incredibly long video helpful in some way or another. Um, if you did like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, if you have any other questions, pop those down below. I will do my best to answer them. And of course, stay tuned for the finished product. I should probably cut this pattern out tonight and get started. Yeah, let's do it. All right, until next time, everybody. See ya!